I am thankful uh, once again that um, Bishop uh, Ramundo and the bishops of Asia, along with uh, Bishop Albert Belmonte and Europe, has uh, invited me and, and given me the opportunity to join you uh, via video and bring uh, a word from the Lord to you. Uh, at the same time, I long to be with you. Just a few days ago, the bishops of Asia and uh, our bishop in Europe joined together for an online meeting. And even though it was a blessing to meet this way, and we had two hours of sharing, it's not the same as being together. And uh, I can hardly wait to celebrate the Eucharist with them, uh, to meet together around the table for a feast and to have a time of fellowship. And I can hardly wait to get to the Philippines, uh, get back to each of the dioceses, uh, and uh, um, as well as getting back to Africa, which is another area I uh, have to go to, and to Europe. And when we go, I want to have a big celebration of Jesus and the fact that we are um, not a people of survival, but a people of revival. And we are going forward and we are growing in the Lord and in numbers. Uh, I heard from this House of Bishop that there's going to be some young men, young men ordained to the priesthood and to the diaconate, that there's churches being planted, uh, new churches growing up in, in the Philippines. And I know that's going to happen soon uh, in Europe as well. So I can't wait to see you all and uh, be together. Please pray that the, the, the airlines are going to open, the pandemic restrictions are going to happen, uh, and that it will come to an end soon. Foundation Day, which uh, Bishop Ramundo and the other bishops asked me to uh, speak to you about, uh, began very early in the life of the Charismatic Episcopal Church. Uh, someone suggested in the House, uh, House of Bishops meeting uh, that we celebrate the patriarch, at the time, Archbishop Randolph Adler, and the founding of the CEC. And it was decided at that meeting of the House of Bishops that we would set aside the Sunday closest to the consecration uh, of Archbishop Adler uh, as the first bishop. And on the Sunday closest to that, we would take up an offering and we would bring that offering of thanksgiving uh, for our communion and for Archbishop Adler uh, and give it to him for his personal use as a blessing to him. Archbishop Adler, the man of generosity that he was, a giver and not a taker, decided that he would not accept the offering as a personal gift, but rather he would establish a fund called the Foundation Day Fund that would be used to buy land, build buildings, or to fix buildings uh, all around the world. And that we would be a communion, uh, a communion led by the Spirit um, and a people who recognize that God wants us to be in space and place and land, that God wanted to give us a land and land uh, throughout the world. And so since the beginning of the CEC, this offering has been taken up and we have uh, we have purchased many properties and many churches and we have fixed up uh, buildings all for the glory of the Lord God. But what we're doing in this, what we're doing in this and you're going to do in the Philippines is you're going to lay a foundation for the future. This is about the future. And we are a people called to be a people of the future who look for the future, who look for the coming of the Lord not only in heaven, but here on earth. I learned when I uh, most about this and living for the future when uh, uh, my wife and I had our first child. Until I got married um, back, uh, it'll be 50 years ago, in a week or so, uh, um, my concerns as a young man had to do with my future. Uh, what was I going to do? Was I going to go to college? Was I going to go? Uh, was I going to work as a psychologist at the time? Uh, the priesthood wasn't in my mind until after I got married. Uh, where was I going to work? Where, you know, how was I going to do this? And um, when I got married, once I got married, 
that future changed a little. It became not my future, but our future. Uh, that somehow now my wife and I had to do this uh, together. And part of that future for us uh, had to do with having children. Children were in our future. Um, this was, and I believe it's God's plan that we have children. Children are not an inconvenience. They don't interrupt the plan. Uh, they don't make the plan harder. Children are a blessing from the Lord. They are the plan uh, for each one of us. And then when I had my first child, a son named Joel, suddenly my concerns became not living for my future or our future, but we became living for his future. It was to live for him. That somehow life was going to find its real meaning in living for another person. And God wanted this because in that we were going to be taught how to love, how to really love. Because love is about living for another. It is surrendering our will to God's will to love. It began a journey for me to understand what Jesus was really talking about when he said, pick up your cross daily and follow me. And the cross wasn't my son or my wife or my family. No, the cross was my selfish will that I had to crucify. I had to die to that self-will way back from when I was young and now live into God's will to live for another. Having children and having children around me, especially at the Mass, at the Eucharist, taught me that God is calling each of us out of that selfishness into selflessness. The Holy Spirit was changing my mind from what can I get out of life to how can I live and put into the lives of those around me. And again, as I said, children are a gift from God because not only do they teach us to live to others, they teach us to live in a hope of a future in each of the eyes of the, our children. We see a future, something greater than what we have now. A future that is not in the tyranny of the past. See, if we look at our past all the time, uh, there are things that we could have done better. There are things that we should have done better. And there's things we probably can sit back and say, if I could live again, I would do better. But we can't do any of that. We really need to eliminate the should have, would have, and could have from our vocabulary and more importantly, from our thought life. Because the enemy wants to bring those up and, re and bring us to self-loathing and self-hatred and into fear and depression and hopelessness. God has opened for each of us a way to deal with the past. It's called forgiveness. It's called bringing it to the cross and receiving the forgiveness of God and then having God restore us to all righteousness and push us on our way into the future called to repent and confess and trust God. See, we need to stop talking about our sin identity and talk about our freedom identity. See, we start, start talking about our sin identity when it comes to the sins of our fathers or the sins of the church, and we need just to receive the forgiveness. See, if we keep back there in the past, then we really deny the power of the cross and the resurrection and the hope that it brings to live and press on. As the Bible says, forgetting what lies behind, I take hold of that which has taken hold of me and I press on. See, our future is a yes and an amen from God. And we'll be blessed, each one of us, each one of you sitting in church today or watching on, on the television or on your iPhone or your iPad, you're going to be blessed to see your inheritance. God has an inheritance for you. And that inheritance is going to grow into generations. You know, I'm watching my grandchildren right now go through high school and Next year, I will celebrate the graduation of my oldest grandchild from high school. She's already talking about her plans for 
uh, for college and her future and what she wants to do. And the, and the middle one is the same way, talking about her plans. And the younger ones are coming up, even to the two-year-old who wants to be a fireman. You see, all of that is about the future, and we will see the future. That's the promise of the Lord. And if the Lord returns, before that happens, we're asked, will, we be, will he find us living by faith? Jesus said, will I find faith on earth? Jesus wants to find the people who are giving, not just giving reluctantly, but giving generously to that future. Loving boldly, forgiving our offenders, seeking forgiveness for ourselves, living for others as individuals, and especially living for others as a church. To be churches in the midst of our community who are going to be known for our love. A church who blesses their elderly, who doesn't kill their preborn, who brings up their children in the knowledge and the love of God. See, will he see us walking in fear? or faith? Will he see us in bitterness, resentment, hostility, despair, quarrelsome, causing division? Or will he see us pursuing love with everything that we have? Will the CEC be a force of unity or division? We come to Foundation Day and we will take an offering. But it is a day to give thanks, more importantly to give thanks, for the mighty river that is with us. God has called us not to be a new revised version of something else, uh, but to be the universal ancient historic move of, church, of the church, which is fully charismatic, fully evangelical, and fully sacramental and liturgical. We have a vision, and we need to do it, and our bishops and pastors are leading us to do it because they love us. And they love God. And they want to bring people into the presence of Jesus. That's the desire of their hearts. And so we need to thank them for that leadership. It's difficult sometimes for them. Every time we come together, we need to be overcome by the presence of the Lord. Thankful for the worship teams, the music ministries that are so much a part of helping us do that. To lift up holy hands, to to sing in the spirit, to dance before the Lord with flags and banners and, you know, and then to come to the Eucharistic table that has been set by the deacons and, and, and thought about and prepared by the altar guild and all those who serve. To come in the presence of God, knowing Jesus is in their midst. As I was preparing this, this, uh, this message, and I'll end with this, because it, it, where it began for me, I was remembered sitting in a, in a church back 40 years ago, uh, uh, sitting in the church, and all of a sudden we began to sing, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can see his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the sounds of angel wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us open ourselves to his presence and give generously today to his work, the work that Jesus has called each one of us to do. Father, move in the power of your spirit upon the churches now in Europe, in Asia. Move upon the people gathered, especially upon the little children. Bless those who are leading us in worship, the choir, the, the, uh, the band, you know, so many great worship leaders that I can see in my eye right now, Father, I lift up to you. Let us dance before the Lord, let us sing in his presence, and Lord, move in our hearts the, the fire, let that fire of the Holy Spirit burn, let the wind come, let the walls rattle, and that we would surely know that we're in the presence of Jesus. Amen.